Welcome back here with us on Overdrive. The deal from the three-row electric crossover from Mercedes-Benz has got even more sweeter. The 350 EQB now replaces the 300 with better performance and similar range. Have we caught your interest just yet? So I'm back behind the wheel of a Mercedes-Benz EQB. I know we are not driving this car for a comparison story because honestly speaking, there's hardly any competition for the EQB, right? The only competition for it comes from its own i-sibling, the GLB, and to an extent from the highly desirable GLC. But the GLC has stopped taking orders for a while now because there's a new one coming. Should be here by Diwali this year. So in the meantime, until that new car comes out, the GLB and the EQB have been given the task to hold the fort for Mercedes-Benz India in this particular price bracket. Now, these two vehicles came to the Indian market only a little while back. And, well, they aren't really the right alternative for a GLC, but with its three rows of seating, both these cars sort of pose themselves as a more practical alternative to the GLC, depending on how you look at it. Now, when we reviewed these two vehicles a little while back, I told you that if I had to pick between the GLB and the EQB, it would be the EQB because of the kind of performance, range, the kind of clean emissions that it offers. So that would be my pick. And looks like a lot of you buyers also agreed with me because the EQB happens to be the higher selling car out of the two. So Mercedes-Benz India is now making the deal a little bit sweeter on the electric because what we have here right now is the new EQB 350 formatic. You can identify the EQB 350 with the badge on the boot lid and the new design for the alloy wheels, which continue to use an 18-inch diameter. The key fob has lost its bronze accents, while the rest of the car's design remains unchanged. This means that you continue to get what essentially looks like a scaled-down GLS, which has three rows of seating, a smart and youthful-looking dashboard with multiple textures, and two screens, which too are scaled-down compared to the screens in the GLS but are just as feature-rich with the latest MBUX software. It also means that the driver-side AC temperature readout is still hard to read. But the instrumentation will show quicker speedometer readouts because the EQB350 is a faster car than the 300. I was anyway quite impressed with the performance of the EQB300, but the 350 pushes that envelope further. The 0 to 100 time for this car is 6.2 seconds, 6.8 seconds tested. And that's quite quick. That's quicker than the 300. Almost two seconds quicker, to be precise. Of course, stepping hard on the throttle isn't something expected of someone driving a practical three-row electric crossover. But the quicker acceleration is addictive and aids with easier overtakes as well. Being heavy on the right foot doesn't seem to affect the range all that much either. This is astonishing considering that the 350 uses the same 66.5 kilowatt hour battery pack as the 300. Because the battery size remains unchanged, the charging times remain similar too. But what does change because of the additional performance is the range. It is marginally lesser than the EQB 300 on the outright range. Now, our tested range shows about 5 km per kilowatt for the highway and about 6.2 km per kilowatt for the city usage. So if I were to do the math right now, most fast chargers, say GOBP or any of the others that are providing 60 kilowatt charging are charging about 21 rupees per kilowatt. So that means you can get that kind of range, you can do that kind of driving with about 1500 bucks of recharging in a Mercedes-Benz. I don't think I've ever paid that little money for road tripping in a Mercedes-Benz, ever. Where the 350 differentiates itself is with the motor configuration. The EQB 350 formatic runs a dual motor setup. So you have the more complex, the costlier, the more accurate permanent magnet synchronous motor powering the rear wheels because this is predominantly a rear wheel driven car. So most of the driving is taken care of by this more complex motor. And the relatively cheaper or the relatively inaccurate motor in comparison to that 
is the asynchronous motor which powers the front wheels. So it only comes into power when it detects slip, when it detects that you need better traction. That is when it comes into power. So it does that job rather well. So here Mercedes-Benz is able to give you very good performance when it's predominantly driving in the rear-wheel drive mode. And then when there is need for better grip, you always get more traction from the front motor. You also get more performance. The combined power output is obviously higher than what the EQV300 offers and that clearly shows in the overall performance that the vehicle has to provide. Revisiting what I said right at the start, if I had to choose between a GLB and the EQB, it would still be the EQB. And now with the additional performance that you get with this car, without really compromising much on the range, the EQB 354MATIC is actually the sweeter deal. With that, it's a wrap on this week's edition of Overdrive. But remember, you can stay in touch with the team through Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube. And you can follow our latest updates on Instagram. We'll see you next week. Until then, ride and drive safe.